Hi there, this is Kazungu Duncan from Aero Productions and I have been practicing graphics design for four years now. In fact, Facebook was reminding me that four, I mean, three years ago, that is in 2017, I posted a certain photo and, and I felt that this has been a long journey and indeed it has been a long journey. So an experience of four years, I believe I am able to make you become better in Photoshop and that is my task here on YouTube. So today we shall be learning about how to achieve the glow effect in Photoshop. I know it is something that most of you would like to know and, and it makes your portraits look fine and, and it just makes your composite look so much professional. So I will be teaching you in this tutorial and I hope that it will be so very much helpful to you. So guys, as you see, we have a lot to learn from this tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. And now before we start our tutorial, I would like to use this opportunity to send my condolences to the family and friends of Wilkie. Wilkie has been a student in the University of Nairobi. I met her in the main campus Christian Union where we fellowship together and she had an accident and unfortunately she died on the spot. So I would like to say to the family, I'm very, very sorry, receive my condolences and to Wilkie, may your soul rest in peace. I know the Lord is with you. And as a Christian union, we have decided to give towards this family. And you can also become a part of this. And to do so, please send your contribution to this payable number, 559036, account name Wilkie. And we shall be so very much grateful that you are of great help to us. So to the family of Wilkie, Please receive my condolences and Wilkie, may you rest in peace. Now back to the magical world of Photoshop and in case you want to download these images and follow along, you already know what to do. So I'm not going to tell you that. Now you can see I have a cat here, a very cute cat, right? And uh, I'll be using a butterfly, right? This butterfly and I'll make this butterfly uh, glow and uh, we shall see how this will affect. So. I have already cut my subjects. I've already separated my subjects from the background. I didn't want to keep you here because I just need this tutorial to be as short as possible. So I have a butterfly here. It's a, a PNG, of course, I've removed the background. And it is so cute, right? I like it. And uh, this is the cut that we are going to use. So the first thing to do, I will copy this and put it to where I want it to be. Of course, it will be on this very, very canvas. So I'll come here and just come to edit and say copy. The shortcut is control or command C. And then I'll come here to now edit and paste or command V. You can see now it's here and uh, I want it to face this way. I don't know how to put that, but then just hit control T for free transform. Then right click and say flip horizontal. When you say that, it will automatically flip and it will look where this very cut is. And as I look at the cut, it's looking up. So I want to bring this here. I was thinking that maybe this cut is looking at this very, very butterfly. So I'll reduce this, I'll resize it. And to do so, you resize from the corners and you make sure that you hold at least shift so that it is uniform. Then I will place it somewhere like here and then uh, I will hit enter or return then that will be placed there let me yeah I think it's fine the cat is looking at this meow and so on if you say meow maybe it will be so perfect then let me at least you know enlarge this just like that and place it there and enter or return control zero look at that it's already beautiful and uh, maybe it's time now to make it dramatic, right? So what I'll do, I'll select my, maybe let me name my layers. It's good to name them. So I'll call this cut and I will call this butterfly, right? Just like that. Then I need to make a copy of the butterfly layer. So I'll just hit Ctrl J when the layer is selected. And I want to group this so that it is under one group. So what I'll do, I can just hold, I can just, 
I can just select it, then hit Control G, right? If I hit Control G, it will automatically create a group. Alternatively, let me see Control Z. If I take this and drag it and put it on this folder and release, it will automatically, you know, create a group. So you can do that. Then I can name this to Glow, just like that. So I have a group where I'll now be doing my work. Then what I'll do, I'll select this layer. And the first thing I want to do is I want to turn it to a smart filter. Why? Because I need to apply smart filters and I want to have control over these smart filters. So I need to convert it to a smart filter. You can do it in two ways. You can right click and say convert to smart object, right? It will convert it and that will be shown by this sign here. Alternatively, let me see control Z. You can select the layer, come to filter and then say convert for smart filters. So there are so many ways of doing this and it will still achieve the same, same thing. Then I will also make a copy of this. But before I make a copy, I want to change the blending mode from normal to something else. So I'll change from normal to linear dodge. It's in the group of lighting or making things become brighter. And I like linear dodge because it's giving me what I want. So I'll just select linear dodge. Then I will now hit control J to make a copy of that. And then on this copy now, I want now to start making it look the way I want, right? So I'll select this, come to filter, and then, sorry, filter, then blur, and then Gaussian blur. I just need to blur it, so I'll, I'll, I'll start with a lower blur, maybe something like 2 or 2.3, let me do 2, just like that. I can zoom in so that you see what is happening, right? I want you to exactly see what is happening and I guess that will be so beautiful, right? So I think two will do. Let's start with two. We can have control over this because it is a smart object. So let me just hit OK. In case I need corrections, I'll come and make them. So I'll also make another copy of that, Control J. And then what I'll do, I'll double click on this Gaussian blur and just give it now, increase the Gaussian blur to something like, let me see. You can see it's, it starts to glow, right? Let me, I, I can see it's, it's good, right? Let me do something like um, 4.2, 4.2 will work for me. And uh, it's turning to be something, let me see. Before and after, look at that, it's beautiful, right? Let me, let me look at this, maybe blur, uh, should I do something? No. That, that, that's fine, let me leave it at 2. So I'll also pick this layer, right? And hit Control J to make a copy of that. And then I'll double click on this Gaussian blur and just, you know, increase the blur. And, and look at that. I guess I'll go uh, overboard, right? Let me hit OK. Let me go to this, my Gaussian blur here. Maybe if I increase it, let me see how it will affect, sorry. Double click, right? And then just increase this. Let me see, yeah, yeah. I think I like what I'm seeing. Just like that, right? And then say, okay. And then I'll make another copy, right? Control J. Then on that copy, I'll also increase the blur from 29 to something like, let me see. Let me see what will work for me. Um, that is too much. Um, that, let me, let me do something like, I guess, I guess in the 40s or 50s is fine. So let me just do 50 and hit enter, right? Control zero to see how, we, how it's affecting that, right? I think it's beautiful. Should I make another copy? Let's let's make one one more copy and and see how it will be. So Control J, just like that, and also change this blur to something like. I think that's too much. Something not forty nine. It should be higher. Maybe do seventy. I think seventy will work. Just like that. Let's see the before and after. Right just hit this that is before and that is after you can see it is glowing 
then in case we feel that it is too much you you know already what we'll do what we'll do we'll uh, just you know make it look good good so let me see this is it affecting yeah i think it's is the layer right so what i'll do let me pick this and place it in this group i, th I think i should i know why i'm doing this because i'll i'll need this some some other time so and this one should be below so i'll just drag it let me first of all close this so that at least i'm creating some space here right and let me see just close this close this i can open it some other time so what i'll do i'll pick this and place it below these layers right below the layer so that it is not seen to be above the layers right in this group we are specifically talking about this group so i need it to be beneath just like that is this affecting anywhere um let me see if i turn it on yeah i think it's it's giving me something good let me just leave it that way what if i no let, let, let me leave that to be normal right and just see the before and the after oh sorry mm, that's good i think if i open this and come here and hit alt yep 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 that's that's fine right so that's okay and um so i would like to also change this color to something else just to make it look good right so what i'll do i'll have a u and saturation layer i can just click here on the adjustment layers or just come here and say u and saturation sorry so what i'll do i'll clip it to the group just clip it to the group and and what i'll do now i will hit colorize after i've hit colorize i'll increase the saturation to somewhere like 75 and then i can now start changing the color so what color will be good i don't know this is totally um subjective and um, but i guess how about blue let me see blue when it comes to color I, I usually find some hard time to choose which color to use so let me first of all leave it that way we can we can do this we can change this some other time but let me just look how it looks like um that's fine so <clears throat> let me see i don't feel like this layer is doing me any good so what if i take it outside right just like that and close the group right i think that will do me some good yeah because i still need those you know this what do you call it this dot dots i don't know how to call them right i need them to be there because i only want it to affect uh, that part so let me see um before and after let me double click here and try to find another color i don't know what exactly to put but then i've said this is very very subjective you will put a color that you feel is good for you but then for me i am finding it so hard to find a cool color um, I'm thinking of green because green I think it's giving me something good. Also this shade of blue it's also fine. Maybe I should stick to that. I don't know. I'm confused at this moment. Let me increase this and if I reduce this lightness at least to be somehow dark. But then what if I increase it? No. It's it's not good. Let me just lower it so that I have a darker shade of this color. So I I have blue, I have green, they are okay. I also saw uh purple. Purple might be good. Yeah, it's it's a bit good. It's not that bad. But then um, I leave this to you to choose, but let me go with blue at this moment. Let me choose this shade of blue. 
I guess I'll go with that. You choose your your best, right? But for me, I will go with this. So we have made this butterfly glow. Now it's time to paint the highlights because once it's glowing, then we expect that it should be lighting on this very cut, right? So I need to paint highlights on this very cut. So let me come to this cut. And what I'll do, I will uh, create a layer. First of all, should I create the shadows before the highlight? I guess so. So, so that I, I can know where to paint the other, you know, shades. So, so let me just click here and choose exposure and just reduce the exposure, right? Reduce it, reduce it. I want it to be a bit dark, just like that. Then what I'll do, I will inverse this selection just by hitting Control uh, I, or I can just pick a brush and paint with black, right? So let me let me do this. Let me pick a brush and paint with black. To toggle between black and white, you just hit X, or you hit you click here. It will automatically change. So I need a soft round brush. The hardness is zero. Then I can just paint with black. This what this does. It's it's removing that very mask from where I don't want it to be, right? So I just need it to be on the cut, and basically just like that. Increase this. Just paint off. Just like that. And what I'll do, I will clip this so that it doesn't uh, go outside. So let me clip this just like that. You see, it's now a bit good. But, uh, you know, when, when I was making the selection, I didn't make a precise selection, right? I just told the Photoshop, you know what, just make a selection of, of this. So I can see, I can feel there is some bad thing happening here. But then I'll just make sure that it is not happening, right? So just let me paint uh, just like this. Just make sure that you are precise so that, you know, this thing looks a bit realistic. I will know how to deal with this this lighting and maybe what I can do I can make a copy of this right and just put it outside and paint with black to remove it from here or let me do remove the whole of it right I can just remove the whole of it and then paint it where I want so I can hit X and after hitting X sorry it's hanging let me see let me zoom in just like that and reduce the size of the brush, right? Something like that. And just paint along this edge. This one will make it to be more realistic. I don't want it to look as if it is something that is just manipulated here and there. So I'll make sure that it is a bit realistic. Control zero, let me see how it looks like. It looks like it's not fine. So let me reduce the opacity. Control mine. <laughs> Sorry. Let me increase this and just try to dab you see or what I can do right sometimes in design you make your own decisions right I can decide to have a dual light this is an idea that has just come because I find that it will may look to be awkward. So what I'll do, I will now create this and I will, let me, let me delete this, right? And just leave it that way. Then I will make it to be dual, 
right let me let, let me show you what i mean so first of all let me finish with this and then i can show you what i want so i can um, let me put off this and just leave it that way then create a new layer and just call this highlights just like that so i'll once the brush is selected i'll hit alt and pick this color once you hit alt it will change to you know an uh, an eye dropper then i will clip this to uh, this very layer for the cut and just increase the size and just paint so paint just like that after painting like that i will change the i'll change this you know from uh, normal to something like i think overlay between overlay and soft light it will do as well but i guess let me see this and overlay i think i like overlay just like that and then i'll just want to be a bit precise and just come here and try to you know remove it from where i feel it should not be there so what i'll do i'll make a mask on this just like that and paint with black to where i don't want it to be to somewhere like here don't want it to be there so this this is the thing that will take you time to you know just become precise because it's precision makes you you know look good right so make sure that what you're doing is fine i may not do it perfectly because i don't want to make this to be so so much long but then i just need you to get this and understand this so what if i decide to just remove it from this part just like that I think that's that's fine right i just remove it from the beard and leave it to be that way then um, let me now come to my group this one huh? so let me select this and select this then i can group them right and after grouping them i guess i can call this glow one just call it glow one then make a copy of this and just sorry let let it load <coughs> mm, it's taking time to load yeah then i'll just call this glow to right after that i'll now drag this sorry take the move tool and move it somewhere else sorry control z let me turn off this auto select and just control z select the whole group and just move it and then after moving it here i'll just hit ctrl t for three for free transform then i can flip horizontal after that i'll place it somewhere here and i'll also resize it to be a bit smaller just like that and place it somewhere there hit enter to just assume that very new place after that has been done i'll now let me turn on this i'll now come to glow 2 and change its color because i need to have a different color so i'll come to you and saturation and just try to change its color and see what will work for me so i don't know i don't know what goes with blue but i guess this is a matter we can discuss or it is subjective you can decide what to do so maybe this one looks weird i guess
guess purple. Purple will work in this case. Let me let me just leave it uh, that way. I need that purple. Then what I'll do, I'll now come to, let me just close that and come to my cut here and create a new layer and call it highlight. Maybe I can just call it, sorry, highlight, maybe one. So, and um, I'll pick the brush, hit Alt and select that color and increase that brush, right? And just paint, right? Paint in here. And let me try to, you know, put this like like that, and I'll change it to overlay. Let me see soft overlay, just like that, and just paint in, just like that. Hit X. So let me make a mask of this, and hit X. Let's reduce the size of the brush and remove it from here. Just like that. Wow. I think I like that. Although it looks overly exposed, but then I'm just bringing in the idea of dual, you know, uh, what do you call it? Dual uh, lighting because it, it looks fine. <coughs> so I don't think I've, I'll need this. Then if I feel this is too much, I can basically reduce its opacity. Just like that. And look at that. I think I like that. And you can do a lot of twists to this to make it just look fine. Let me see here. I think there should be some light here. I'll select the mask, then take the white and take the brush and just paint over here. X. I don't want it to exit this. Just like that. And let me see if I return this. To, I think 100 will still do because this is something we can <coughs> debate on. Look at that. At least the front part is lit with blue, then the back side is lit with this very, what do you call it, purple. So maybe I can, I can decide to duplicate this so that I have several of them here and there and then see how this will be, right? But I guess one was enough, but I felt like I should also have this other side just as an example, right? To maybe teach you how to achieve that dual effect uh, when it comes to lighting. So I may decide at the end of the day not to have this other side, because to me it looks a bit awkward and a bit off, and I may not like it. But then if you want to achieve a dual lighting in Photoshop, this is the way to go. And that reminds me, uh, Mandalorian usually says, and this is the way. So I think I like this. So I'll go with this at this moment and uh, allow me to run some, you know, I, I won't finish this without having some curves and just spicing these things up. So just select the top layer and come and select curves. Once curves are selected, then I'll try to drop this to bring in some mood, <coughs> just like that. And I'll also have some levels and try to just make this thing cool, just like that. Can also touch here, just putting a touch, it's not that much. Just like that. Let me see. Yeah, it's 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 giving me something good. 
then after this is done I can now come and have now the camera row so I'll select the topmost layer and I will hit Control, Shift, Alt and E to just make a stamp visible layer and just double click and call it camera row then I'll right click and convert to smart object then I can come to filter and then camera row then I will allow this to load and as it is loading in case you are finding value in this video feel very very free to subscribe and not only subscribe ring that bell so that you my friend do not miss any future tips tricks or tutorials that I offer every week it's still loading so it's giving you time maybe to like this video and also to share it to your friends now it's done now look at this so what I'll do I'll drop some exposure here just give it some mood not too much just a touch of it increase the contrast so I may not tell you what it does just play around with this and see what it brings maybe and pump up some shadows reduce some blacks increase some white and I'll give it a little bit of texture so I'll just give it some texture right then I'll increase the clarity look at that it's, it's becoming more natural now then uh, should I dehaze this I don't know let me try I guess this much is fine can increase the vibrance I don't usually go beyond 50 so maybe something like 32 32 is fine then I'll come to FX sorry did I touch something wrong no I said 32 I misbehaving sometimes Photoshop wants just to misbehave it likes misbehaving anyway so let me go with 25 come to FX I need to have some vignetting so I'll just drop this uh, amount and try to increase the feathering right and play around with these other you know just like that although the vignetting here I don't feel like it will be much effective but then this is the way so I'll just hit OK and see the difference in case it does not become beautiful I don't know but I guess this is fine and uh, yeah, that was before this is after I think this is fine so you may realize that the background has become dark <laughs> uh, it's being affected by uh, by the curves and the the levels but I think it's still fine right but again if you need to have maybe a different uh, background it is possible so for me I'll leave it this way because this tutorial I feel it's already long but I guess you found uh, the very very thing that you are looking for then I had here a butterfly I just needed to show you something you may find like you need to use this butterfly but if you look at it it has some watermark this one is really annoying so I want to show you how to remove the watermark and use this very very photo so what I'll do I'll create a new layer right and then I will use a tool called the clone stamp tool the shortcut is S or it, it's really here so what I'll do I'll hold alt to hold alt is to copy a sample so this is copy and paste so I'll copy a sample from here just click once it will copy a sample I will release the alt and look at this you see that line so I'll make sure that that line is coinciding right just like that and I'll click and just paint look at that and just paint look at that but when you're doing that make sure that sample you can say sample the current and below or sample all layers for that to work then I'll hold alt copy here and have this line just like that and just paint you see 
it's gone, right? I'll come here and also I need to copy this and just make sure that it is working and just like that. I'll come copy this. You now know the idea, right? Sorry, let me copy it from here and paint it just like that. You know now the idea. You'll do the rest of this photo and you can see if I turn this off, I still have that but when I turn it on, I have at least the, the, the logo or the watermark is gone. So guys, that is what I felt like sharing to you today and I believe that this was so much helpful to you. And if this was helpful to you, do not feel afraid to subscribe. Hit that red button and make sure that you also turn on the notifications so that I can be sending you a video every week. And also I hope that you like the speed ads that I've, I've been making recently. And in case you have any comment about them, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Just to remind you, I talked about uh, Wilkie. Please give towards this, this family. I can really imagine how hard this has hit them and how hard this has hit the main campus Christian Union. Please find in the description the, the details for your contribution and we will be so very much glad to receive your contribution. Otherwise, I hope that I will see you in my next video. Until then, remember to keep creating.